Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring the upcoming tier 10 light cruiser, Soviet cruiser, Alexander Nevsky. Now, I say light cruiser with citation marks because this has to be the heaviest light cruiser I have ever seen in the entire game. First of all, Sorry for the slight absence, I had my eye surgery on Tuesday uh, and I'm glad to say that I'm recovering very well from it but there's still some issues namely with uh, can't really stream for that long since the eyes are quite sensitive. It was an ICL, uh, an implantable contact lens type of surgery where they basically insert the lens into the eye. Uh, it went well though, so here we go. The first thing that stands out about the Alexander Nevsky is probably the fact that it has 50.9k health, which is obviously completely ridiculous for a light cruiser when you consider the health pools of Wooster and Minotaur and other so-called light cruisers. The other thing is, <laughs> well, probably what you saw there. These 180mm guns, well actually before we get into the 180mm guns, let's go into the actual ship itself. The thing has a pretty interesting armor scheme, namely the broadside armor is 140mm, but it's actually layered armor, there, the, the citadel itself is protected by another layer of 40mm of armor which gives you a total of 180 millimeters of armor. Now, when you compare this to, well, let's say something like the Wooster, that's another light cruiser, the Wooster only has 127 millimeters of Citadel armor, and the Des Moines, which is of course the American heavy cruiser, well, that thing only has 152 millimeters of armor. So this Soviet light cruiser having 140 plus 40 aka 180 millimeters of, of armor plating on the Citadel uh, <laughs> is obviously pretty extreme. Uh, the other thing about the armor is the fact that it has an icebreaker bow which means that basically the lower part of the the lower part of the ship has 50 millimeters of plating and it does protect the citadel so when you're close range and you're pushing into something like a yamato he actually can't citadel the nevsky or the thunder or kremlin or basically any of these because that icebreaker bow uh, is 50 millimeters and extends high enough that it protects the entire front of the citadel this same 50 millimeter plating extends pretty far in the back it doesn't entirely cover the back but it does go well basically all the way to the rudder itself so if you're angled not impossible to citadel unless we're talking long range overmatch the upper part of the bow or is 25 millimeters so that can be overmatched and uh, upper belt is 25 millimeters as well but the deck armor is 30 millimeters which means that you are capable, if angled with the deck, you are capable of bouncing, well, um, obviously, Borgogne, uh, Montana, Grosse Korforst. So, basically, the only the battleships that can overmatch 30mm, which is 430 and larger, are capable of truly punishing this ship at range. At close range, when you're rushing them with these torpedoes, well, there is... It's quite hard. Obviously, they can hit the upper belt, but high chance of just overpens. Um, and you have so much health that even if they do get pens, it's unlikely to actually be enough to kill it off. And the torpedoes themselves are 8km torpedoes. You have 5 of them per side, and they do about 60 knots, and they hit for about 14k. So it is a pretty significant uh, torpedo threat. Now, more than the torpedo threat, is of course the guns themselves. The AP on this Nevsky, these 180mm guns, well, they perform more like 203mm guns when it comes to the AP performance. They actually have excellent penetration, and more importantly, they have completely bonkers ballistics. You probably see how little lead I'm taking shooting these ships. These are 15 kilometers away, and you can tell that my lead, or time to target, is only about 5-6 seconds. I don't need to take a lot of lead at all, and that's because the shell velocity on these guns is, hold on to your horses, a thousand meters per second, for both the HE and the AP. 
Add in that the stock range is 19 kilometers, which is very, very high for any cruiser, let alone a light cruiser. Um, you have fantastic shell velocity, sh fantastic ballistics, and fantastic range. Add in the fact that your firing angles are really good, and your armor is very, very effective. This ship is very effective both at closing the target, chasing ships like this Tirpitz, and very effective at kiting away. Now, the downside is of course supposed to be this uh, poor, poorer Soviet long-range dispersion, but the Nevsky just makes up with having so many shells in the air and just so much firepower in the air that it doesn't really matter if you're whiffing a fair bit. You just make up for it with sheer shell count. In general, like the 4x2 set torpedo turret setup is probably one of the worst, but it really doesn't bother the Nevsky, the Nevsky too much. And if you close the distance, well, you can fight with the best of them. And that includes the Wooster. In fact, you're probably you're gonna see me fight a Wooster later on. Here's an example. That's a triple fire on this turbines. And note that this is with me running IFHE. With the build I'm running right now, uh, with Demo Expert, IFHE and Flags, the thing has a 10.5% fire chance, and it's capable of penning 37 millimeters of plating, which means, well, the majority of battleship plating. There are exceptions, namely Soviet VBs, but especially against cruisers, the HE is brutally effective. Now, I did say it's one of the heaviest light cruisers I have ever seen, and now, I don't only mean the upsides that come with being a light cruiser, which is DPM and um, small size and such things, but also the maneuverability. It maneuvers very much like a heavy cruiser. It does 37.8 knots with the speed flag, but it has a turning circle radius of 940 meters, and running the rudder shift module, it has a rudder shift time of 9.2 seconds, which is pretty far from excellent. In fact, for a light cruiser, that's terrible. That's more along the lines of what you'd expect from a fairly tanky large heavy cruiser. The concealment is also not much to brag about either. The base concealment is 12.8. Once again, something more along the lines of a heavy cruiser. Uh, air detectability 8.4. Once again, smoke firing detectability 10 kilometers. These are all values you would actually expect to see on a heavy cruiser. Yet this is supposed to be the light cruiser line, as evidenced by the upper belt being 25 millimeters, just like on all the other light cruisers after the IFHE rework. It does have access to radar. It's a 30 second radar. Uh, I'm running the radar module to boost it to 36 seconds. Uh, it's a 12 km radar, which of course with the 12.8 km uh, concealment is very, very effective, especially with the speed you're pushing in, DD pushes into you, you get spotted by the time he's turning, you can already radar him and with these rail guns. You can do a fair bit of damage, but it's you can sometimes be pretty unlucky with landing these shells with the dispersion and another thing that I've been noting a bit lately, maybe it's just me, but I feel like I've been seeing a lot of shells kind of pass through ships. I'm wondering if they're having some server issues. Oh, he's giving broadside. It's a tier 8 heavy cruiser and he's giving broadside at about 14 kilometers. Oh, he angled in. We switch, we're going to switch back to HE then. With the fast reload, especially with the reload module, you always got the right ammo for the right situation. This time he's giving broadside and at this time only at 12 kilometers. And here again, an idea of just a kind of AP capacity this so-called light cruiser can pump out against other cruisers. This thing is brutally powerful. You cannot afford to give this thing broadside. Five citadels and Albemarle is down. Switching to HE for the Haraguma, hoping to heal since the booster is targeting me. Only landing three shells. The HE DPM, well, they, it makes up for it with the pure shell count. But the issue is, of course, that the shell alpha is fairly low. You see situations like that, with the shells just... Where are the hits? Sometimes not getting as hits, many hits as you'd like. The Wooster, however, is pouring far too much damage on me here. Situation, like, I I've been seeing a lot of that lately, where you kind of like, you kind of blink and you're like, wait, did, did all those shells really miss? Am I seeing things? 
Regardless though, the Wooster is harassing me, I'm not too bothered, I'm not interested in actually stopping shooting, because of course, just like all other Soviet ships, you can run the best captain in the game on them, and that is Kuznetsov. So if they do manage to get me below, below 5k, Kuznetsov will proc, and now I'm healing and I got a dispersion penalty well, on the enemy ship shooting me, so I know there's basically no chance whatsoever that they will kill me off. I'm still gonna play it safe and stop firing here and just enjoy the Kuznets of heal while I wait for my own heal to come off cooldown. With the t incredible tankiness of the ship and the health pool, making Kuznets of proc is actually not that difficult. I've only played a couple of games in this ship and I haven't really had too many issues procking at all of these times. I'm kind of pinging my teammates because I'm not very impressed by their positioning. Uh, my, both my tier 10 BBs are on the J line in the, the very depth of our spawn. Uh, meanwhile, the Gearing and I are basically trying to salvage this game. I get a heal off and I'm going to slow down a bit, see if I can wait for the Wooster to close the distance a bit. He appears to have radared. I'm not sure what actually caught my gearing. My gearing decided to smoke up in front of them, which is very questionable. And he gets killed off. And now we're in some serious trouble. I need to stop the Wooster from pushing it A, so I have to take a fight with him. He's got 37,000 health. I have 12,000. Looks like a poor situation, you'd think. But then you gotta consider that this is not like all other light cruisers. First of all, <laughs> You, when you land, with the, the, he's close enough that my accuracy is very, very effective. And second of all, I'm fast, so he has a hard time landing shells on me. My shell velocity is god tier. I have absolutely no issues landing shells on him. And what happens when I actually end up fighting him is, well, he's struggling to hit me because Wooster shells, the arcs are so lazy, and I having, I'm having absolutely no issues just continually nailing him and even with IFHE you see how many fires I have on him just an absolute one fire going on his booster and the 4k alpha he disengages he doesn't want any part of this he's realizing he's, he's about to lose this fight and he's about to lose it terribly I'm slowing down hoping 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 maybe he's pushed up where has it gone he's got a huge concealment advantage over me and I do want to turn around and fight him. Heal comes up. But it looks like he's gone. I do a desperation radar. Maybe he's turning within my range. I mean, I, there's no DDs left to radar anyway. So I might as well try to catch him. But the booster has smartly disengaged. Oh, and another thing I didn't mention. Uh, the Nevsky. Besides being able to slot, of course, radar. You can, you can switch between defensive AA and hydro. And the Nevsky ex actually appears to have really really monstrous AA. It's got 6.9k MAA, uh, AA range that is, and the continuous damage goes all the way up to 4 kilometers and the flak is from 3.5 to 6.9 and you're throwing out something like, what was it, 8 flak? Um, so you have the potential to be a very very strong AA ship. That's why I've been running defensive AA even though I highly recommend Hydro. I've been running defensive AA just so I could see if I could finally get a carrier to fight who would target me and see how well this ship can defend itself. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a theme with this that they have very very long AA ranges, all of these Soviet uh, ships in comparison to the rest. Don't score giving broadside, instantly switching to AP. Even at this range, once again, something no other light cruiser in the game would ever do, switch to AP on a ship that's like 17 kilometers away, and the amount of lead I need to take is so very small, it's only an eight and a half second travel time for my shells to reach him. So I know that my shells can catch him. And as you can see, the DPM is very, very effective. He angles away, I am a bit higher. I call target on the Wooster because I know I'm about to kill this guy. I hit him for 3.8k. The Thunder, however, finishes the Donskoy, the sh one ship that I can shoot at, while leaving him in a one-on-one -on -one with the Wooster. They are actually very close to winning, so right now my hope is that a Thunderer at least can kill the Wooster. Note that the Wooster could have just run away. There was actually nothing stopping the Wooster from just completely disengaging and running away, but I'm glad that for once the enemy team has the suicidal guys in 
well, my team had the fair share of them as well, but when it comes to the end game, the decider, I'm glad that the enemy team has their share of them as well. Overall though, the Nebeski, by far um, the largest, tankiest, hardest hitting light cruiser I have ever seen. The AP performs like a heavy cruiser, the armor performs like a heavy cruiser, better than most heavy cruisers because of that icebreaker bow. Um, the speed, the health pool, the turning circle, the concealment. It's, I mean, selling this thing as a light cruiser seems like such a stretch to me, but that's what it's going to be. It's, it's the split off of the line. Uh, this is supposed to be the light cruiser's lineup. Um, <laughs> not really sure how to take that, except with slight incredulity. Regardless, the game ends. 204,000 damage. I am absolutely confident this will not be my highest damage score. This was only a score that I racked up today. I'm pretty sure as I'm going to be testing these ships over the coming days and weeks, uh, we are going to see some completely ridiculous numbers from these ships. Of that, I have no doubt. This is just my first impressions on having received this ship today. Six citadels, 13 fires, four kills, sadly no Kraken. The Donsko would have been the Kraken. Team score, only 2.2k, but well, I'll take it. A uh, fun, fun game that kind of got to show off a fair amount of both the HE and AP and just overall performance on the ship. Detailed report wise, well, mostly HE, not that much AP. I might switch that around. Honestly, I'm not sure. Both the HE and AP perform so well because this ship just pumps out so many shells with such great velocity. Um, the poor long range dispersion is, I think, even less of a factor on the Nevsky than on the Petropavlovsk, because the Petropavlovsk is at least somewhat hindered by a long reload. Whereas this thing, well, excluding AR, this thing has a 5.3 second reload with my current build. When you add in AR, reducing that by 10-15%, we're, we're talking about Des Moines reload, or on like Des Moines with AR reload or on these guns, and uh, <laughs> it just seems, um, yeah, let's just say I need to do more testing, but Nemsky appears to be pretty damn broken. Um, I did draw the Atlanta winners. If you're interested, I can put the I'll put the winners up on Twitter. I don't want to add any more winners on my YouTube since the giveaway is kind of gone. Thank you guys for watching, for following. If you subscribe to the channel, I greatly appreciate it as I am uh, gunning for my 100k YouTube subscribers as well. Congrats to the three winners and I will try to send the prize list over to War Gaming so that they can start crediting all you guys who have won my giveaways. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.